Hello YouTube. This is the first of a series of videos that I'm going to do from start to finish on drawing this portrait for a client. And uh, this, one, this first video here, I'm going to focus on drawing the grid and then sketching on that grid and I'll narrate as I go through that. What I'm just doing at the moment is simply uh, showing you that you can use a ruler and you can mark one inch increments or half inch inc increments, whatever you prefer. I, I like to use the one inch. And then I would draw uh, connecting the lines horizontally and vertically. And then when I'm done with that, uh, can get to sketching. But instead, what I've done is I've used uh, a paint program, in this case Photoshop, with a transparency on my laser printer and I printed out a grid so that I didn't have to mark up my portrait. And so you could do that too, that's an option. And uh, you just simply would just lay it over your portrait and you'd have your grid automatically all set for you. Here I'm gonna use a watercolor paper, this Arches Hot Pressed, 140 pounds. And uh, I noticed when I opened this, I was down to my last sheet. So what a good time to go ahead and use it for uh, these uh, series of videos that I'm going to uh, be doing here. So uh, we'll be done with that and uh, go straight into um, using this paper. Now, what I'm doing is I'm looking for the smoothest side. One side is usually smoother than the other. Uh, the more dimply side is, you know, to hold the water color paints which I'm not going to use so I find the uh, smoothest side and that's the side I'm going to draw on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to center uh, this portrait onto the paper so I can uh, get it right where I want it because one of the things I normally do with my drawings is I frame them. Now this particular uh, drawing is for a client so um, I assume it will be framed but it's always nice to center your portrait and so I'm using the ruler just to make sure that I've, I've got it uh, as close to the center as possible. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tape it on uh, the sides and, and, and the top there and the reason for that is so it doesn't move and I'm going to use that grid to actually mark on the drawing paper, and I'm using a, a mechanical pencil here, uh, I think it's a 0.3, uh, 2H uh, grade uh, lead, but it really doesn't matter. And I'm going to mark my one inch increments using the grid transparency that I have so that it will be identical. So whatever is within the grid square uh, on my portrait will be exactly what I will draw on the paper itself. And it's a quick and easy way to do it, much quicker than using uh, the ruler. Okay, now here I'm gonna just go ahead and connect the uh, vertical lines and uh, the horizontal lines, draw those in. And that way I can get uh, to sketching. What is really nice about using a transparency rather than drawing on your portrait is that, well, not only is it reusable, but you could flip the transparency up when you want to see underneath one of your grid lines, because sometimes there are small little details that uh, the grid line might actually hide. And, and if you're really into small details as I am, you want to be able to just kind of flip that transparency up so you can see how I could do that right there. Okay, now I decided to use a 4H pencil. Um, I, most of the time I'll use a 2H or an F, a layout pencil like the 555 from Generals. Uh, but today I'm just going to go ahead and use a 4H, use a really light hand. And what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the square for the top of the head. And what I see in the square is exactly what I'm drawing. Now, I'm not going to draw every little hair. I just want to get a basic outline of his head and then I'll worry about uh, the details later.
Now you want to you want to just make sure that you draw exactly what you see within the squares. And what I like to do is I'll look at the negative space. That it's usually you know uh, an area that maybe is uh, not the main subject. Like for example, you can see his beard might be in half of a square and his skin might be in another half. Well, I'll look at that skin maybe as the negative space and look at that shape and make sure that I leave that shape within that square. And so it, it helps me to freehand this uh, as I go along. But in part two, not in this video, but in part two, uh, I'm gonna go in with my proportional divider and make sure that all my measurements are correct, most, mostly around the eyes and the ears and, and the nose and so forth, the main areas. Okay, so I'm coming to the end here of uh, sketching uh, this portrait. And uh, here you can see what I've done so far. Now in part two, I'll go in and make sure I've got any little details that I, I need in there. And I'll also uh, make sure that I've got the eye measurements correct and everything else. So I'll see you in part two. Thanks for watching.